Hey everyone, it's Jim from Melatone Kits. Welcome aboard everyone. And in this first episode, I'm going to walk you through the universal phono preamp. And let's just get started. I'm going to show you some of the secrets as to why this is such a great sounding kit preamp. And of course, in future episodes, I'll be referring back to the schematics to show you how this works electrically, why things are done in certain ways. I'll show you some of the, you know, tips and tricks of building this properly as we go. I've built a lot of these kits. And of course, the, this is prototype. This is the final prototype version. It was six months in development and it had many, many iterations. This is the one that they all sounded really good, but this is the one that sounds amazing. <laughs> so when we get to that point of listening tests and electrical tests, uh, one of us, usually it's, uh, uh, usually it's me. I say, don't change anything, Charles. This, that's, that's it. We've, we found it. And, um, Anyways, let's get started. So this is a dual mono design. And what that means is there's basically two phono preamps inside one chassis. And with dual mono designs, you get a wonderful stereo separation. You get a great sound stage as a result. And uh, it, you know, it, the first, the very first prototype I built years ago using a dual mono topology, uh, and I listened to the clarity that came out of that preamp. I said to myself, why isn't everybody building this way? Well, of course, the reason is cost. If you're a big manufacturer, building two power supplies is just, you know, nobody in the bean counting department is going to allow that. <laughs> but we're not about counting beans. What we want is the best sounding uh, equipment possible at a reasonable price. Okay, let's get rolling. So you'll notice that I've got two cover colors here and the amp comes in two basic colors. You can have it in a, a matte brushed aluminum matte black cover here. The top plate's always going to be um, a natural uh, brushed aluminum color and you can have it in silver. So um, them's your choices. So underneath this cover, we've got an R core transformer and the heart of any audio gear is going to be the transformer and R cores are wonderful because they, um, they tend to be lower noise than a conventional, um, transformer and they're much more affordable than a troidal. So, and they're sort of a hybrid between the two. And this transformer is wonderful because it was designed with two matching secondary outputs, which allows us to use one transformer and have a dual power supply. So you're going to see in the power supply section, you're going to have two large filter caps. You're going to have two of everything basically. So under here, you've got two chokes. They're also, these are filtering, these are filtering as well. And let's just do a com complete run around of the top and then we'll go inside. And so you've got a pair of RCA jacks, yeah, and a pair of outputs. Okay, that's easy peasy. Here you've got uh, a quick um, screw down for the ground lug from your turntable. That's essential for low noise when you're playing playing vinyl. Over here you've got a DC in jack. That's for your switch mode power supply. In fact I've got one sitting right here on the bench. These are just the bricks that you would power your laptop with or all kinds of things. You know I installed a set of kitchen lights for my mother-in-law and it had a switch mode uh, power supply. Typically, they're just called power bricks or SMPSs. So, this is a universal preamp, very much like the 6 or 12 SN7, except this uses the SL SL7 series of tubes. So, the 6 volt 6 SL7 or the 12 volt 12 SL7. 
And those are in the gain stages. There's two gain stages. And the cathode follower is either a 6SN7 or a 12SN7. And the way you supply the voltage to fire up the tubes or lamp them um, is to plug in either a 6 volt or a 12 volt switch mode and Bob's your uncle you've got power. Not only that but because your filaments are turned on independently of your power supply you can pre-warm the tubes which is great because it avoids an inrush current. So it should give you a longer lived tube. So that's basically it up top here. Um, you'll notice the plinth is unfinished. On all of our prototypes we just slap together something and someday we'll, we'll finish them up nicely so we can show them off. But these are solid cherry wood. In a past life I was a traditional cabinet maker. So these are, these are beautifully made plinths and they're, they come unsanded and ready to finish. So you can put whatever finish you want on them. And in the build series, I'll actually talk about one method that's a simple way to finish them up beautifully. On the back, you've just got a IEC inlet, uh, a fuse in the middle, and a switch. So this is your primary fuse. Okay, let's turn this sucker over and have a look at the guts. We're going to be careful because we've got tubes on the top here. You shouldn't do it that way, but for expediency we are. So back here you've got your power supply. So you've got two power supply boards. They're identical and all your noisy bits in the preamp are in the rear. Nothing that makes noise is up in the circuit area and there's good reason for that because phono preamps have extremely high gain and any noise that gets onto the audio path is going to get amplified and amplified, right? There's two gain stages. So, and they're both maxing out the uh, capability of the 6SL7, which it has a nominal gain of 70. And I think we're somewhere around 58, which is about as much as you can get out of that tube. So your signal is going to come in over here on our RCA jacks. This is your left channel. This is your right channel over here. And it comes in through shielded cable. It comes into uh, the preamp boards. The preamp boards also have the RIAA circuit on it. So the equalization circuit. And they also have, um, they have these jumper connector pins on the boards that allow you to choose um, two input impedances. Currently I have um, 47K mounted, I think. And they also allow you to choose two capacitances. Now I don't have any on, and a lot of systems don't need additional capacitance, but it's here. You'll get the actual capacitors in your kit. And in fact, that's a good thing to mention. If your phono cartridge has an input impedance requirement different than the very standard 47K ohms, that's pretty much the normal these days, just drop me a note uh, when you order the kit and I'll make sure to put the correct resistor in. That's all it is. It's just a resistor on the input stage. And we'll talk more about the details about you know, what these components do as we get to them in the build series. So the signal comes in, it gets amplified, it gets equalized, it gets, let me do it in the right sequence. <laughs> Jumping ahead of myself. Um, the signal gets amplified, it gets equalized between the amplification stages, and then it gets amplified again. And out it comes, and it goes to a cathode follower stage. And one tube which is a twin triode. All these tubes are twin triodes, right? So two tubes inside one envelope. So one half of the 6SN7 is going to be for the left channel, one half the right channel. And what the cathode follower does is it outputs a signal with 
out any gain. So essentially whatever it comes in goes out. Now in reality you lose a small percentage of the gain and what you get though is a very low impedance signal coming out which means you can easily put longer cables on, you can drive pretty much any control preamp with your um, with the signal off of your vinyl recording. So now what else have we got in here that's worth noting? Well there's your filament switch. In fact all these yellow wires are all the filament wiring and the grounds are really worth pointing out. Topology in any uh, amplifier is really important but in a phono preamp it's absolutely critical and I'm glad that I learned my chops making our other uh, kit preamps, control preamps, um, before I got into producing a a kit phono preamp. So the power supply has its has its safety ground right down here, right close to the inlet. The power supply has a star ground point right here. I should get my pointer out if I can find it. Ah, there it is. By the way, we're going to be filming the entire build series on my lab bench. So, which is handy because there's various bits and bobs lying around here that are convenient just to grab. <laughs> uh, so, there's a star ground point here that is, um, that is just for the, um, the power supply. It's and there's a star ground point here and here that is just for the preamplifier circuit itself. And now you might think that having ground points separated only by a matter of, I don't know, six inches, something like that, seven inches, would not make a difference, but it does actually. It makes a huge difference getting your ground points on the top plate in various positions. And um, the other part of topology that's really neat to look at is you see how these wires, they actually look like they're, well, maybe not badly installed, but they look sloppy, don't they? Because they're sort of flying in over the air like this. Same with these. This is your high voltage over here. And here, and this is your filament voltage over here. And the reason for that is you want your high voltage to be as far away from your sensitive amplification uh, circuits as possible. So it comes flying in open air, which is great to help isolate it, and it just drops in. Same over here. And I just noticed a little thing, but that's okay. We'll be able to deal with that in the build series. There's always something, folks, that I find <laughs> that's different than... than um... So when we actually build kit number one, we're going to make some minor improvements to this. They, they won't be significant. And we'll be actually assembling the whole... Your It'll be basically your whole kit will be my whole kit. It'll be the it'll be identical when we're all done. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you is the aluminum top plate. Now, we don't install one on our prototype build simply because we're always coming in, going, taking measurements and checking things out. So it's just not practical to put one on. But your kit's going to come with one of these and there will be a rebate in the plinth so you can just screw it down. In fact, this is going to be one of the last things you do. When you when it's time to pull out the bottom plate, you know you're almost done. <laughs> okay. And let's let's get organized in the next couple of episodes and I promise you we'll be building this wonderful sounding phono preamp right quick. See you in a bit.